Hey everybody, welcome back. <laughs> Thanks to my newest subscribers and everyone who's been watching my videos. Um, <clears throat> also, shout out to my first patron, Precious Westbrooks. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Um, I want to do a video today about my favorite DCEU movie so far. Justice League will probably be tied for first with this movie when it comes out in a couple months, but as of now, Man of Steel is still my favorite DCEU movie. Batman v Superman is right up there behind it, like super close. And then Wonder Woman and then Suicide Squad, I could have kind of done without, but anyway, I think Justice League will probably be tied for first when it comes out. Um, there's several reasons why I love Man of Steel. Um, <clears throat> you know, so I just want to go over some of them today. Hopefully I won't start going off on a rant. I know sometimes I tend to ramble and I'm sorry. So let's get right into it. Um, I think the first of all, the cast for this movie was great. Um, I think they really did a good job on choosing, of course, Henry Cavill as Superman. To me, he just is Superman. It's hard for me to watch him in other movies and not see Superman. <laughs> Obviously, I know he's been in stuff before and after Man of Steel, things that are not connected to the DCU, other movies, but I just see Superman when I look at him. Um, he is just, yeah, great, great choice as Superman. Um, everyone, I mean, Amy Adams, Diane Lane, Kevin Costner, Russell Crowe, they're all, I mean, those are big names in the, you know, in the movie business. And so, um, I think they did a good job of bringing this cast together and, um, giving us good quality actors for such a big movie, you know. Um, <clears throat> so I really, I don't think there's anyone that I particularly dislike in Man of Steel or, you know, there's not one that I, there's no one that I really felt like they should have chose someone else for this role. Um, I think they'll do a really good job and their characters. Um, so moving on, cause I don't want to, I don't want to make this video too long. Um, I love that we get, <clears throat> Um, a history and an introduction to Krypton. Um, we've never really had that before in a cinematic um, universe. I think probably the best version that we've had of um, Krypton was in Smallville. Smallville went pretty deep into like Krypton, his history as you know Krypton. They gave us a lot of, some details and stuff about that, but. As far as in a movie, we haven't had such a deep Kryptonian um, history and such a good look at Krypton. It looks beautiful in the movie. Um, <clears throat> the way they designed it to look, it looks like another planet. It doesn't look like Earth, obviously. You know, they did a good job of making it look like you can tell it's another planet. Um, we get to see not just the planet and people... But we also get to see their creatures, their technology. Um, you know, we get a good look at their um, <clears throat> their style, like their garb, and how it's different from humans from Earth. Um, it also gives us a good sense of why they designed Superman's suit for this movie the way they did, and why it's different from the um, more traditional Superman suit. Um, so. I like that also like we get a we get their culture and not just we know that he's from Krypton you know but here we get the culture and um, <clears throat> why Krypton was destroyed not obviously by outside people or sources but why it was self was self-destruction really and what happened and we get a good sense of his father and where he stood on that matter and what he was trying to do and um, we even get like a glimpse at their government type of system, their council, you know. We already get an introduction to Zod and um, we get a sense of his purpose for the rest of the movie. And we also find out another reason why Superman is special, not only on Earth, why he stands out, but more why he's special from a Kryptonian view because he's um, the first natural born person, I was going to say human, but he's not a human, the first natural born person 
on Krypton in centuries because they're genetically mod engineering pre-grown infants to have a certain purpose. And, um, you know, we it gives us more of a sense that he chooses to be good and uses power for good. Yes, he was... Yes, he was raised by the Kents and has a good moral, um, you know, good morals and values from them. But it also shows us that he wasn't genetically engineered to just do good and that he chooses to do good. Unlike, you know, Zod, who was genetically engineered and grown to be um, a warrior, you know, a soldier. And um, that his one purpose is to preserve Krypton and the Kryptonian race, even if it's violent, even if it's cruel. So I also like that they give us that as well from Krypton. Um, another cool thing is that we see like 20 minutes of Krypton before we even see Kal-El. Yes, we see him as a baby, I know, but we're, the, you're, you're like 20 minutes into the movie loving it already. It's already awesome and you haven't even seen Superman yet. So that's really, that was a risk and... It was a good risk to take, in my opinion. Uh, okay, so speaking of Zod, I'll get into the yeah. next point. He was, Michael Shannon did a good job as a villain. Um, I remember watching, like, one of those behind-the-scenes or specials or whatever on <clears throat> Man of Steel. And they're talking about um, choosing the villain for Man of Steel and how Zod, it's interesting that he's an interesting villain because he doesn't, believe he's a villain he doesn't feel like what he's doing is wrong because he just wants to preserve krypton the kryptonian race and so you know in his mind he's not doing anything wrong and you know in one way you know what he what he wants to do is not wrong it's just that the way he is gonna try to go about it by taking out planet earth or you know not the actual planet i know but the human race, that's what's wrong with it. And, you know, as he mentions, he, that's his number one purpose. And so he's going to do whatever it takes to do that. And so I liked him as a villain. And um, I thought that was also another good casting choice. Um, I know that we've had Zods before in the past, and he's probably my favorite interpretation of Zod, even on Smallville. I love the show Smallville. And um, Zod, the man that they chose for Zod um, wasn't my favorite person in the show. He was probably the one person I wouldn't, I didn't like it in the show. But anyway, um, great villain. And uh, it's interesting because they're both Superman and Zod. Are, uh, the last of the Kryptonian race, you know, besides, I know, the other Kryptonians that are in Zod's army, but, you know, it's just, like I said, it's just interesting what Zod's purpose is, and um, that he's posing a threat to Superman and Earth, you know, not just Superman, not just humans, but both. And um, so, the next thing I wanted to go into was the music, oh my god, the music in this movie. <laughs> Hans Zimmer is absolutely amazing. Um, oh my god, I just, the music in this movie sticks with me. Every time I watch Man of Steel, I have to hum to the music. Like, And then it's stuck in my head the rest of the day, sometimes even the next day. That music just gets me, like... I don't know what it is. It's just everything about this music in this movie is beautiful. Yes, I know the traditional Superman theme is great and it'll always be memorable. It's instantly recognizable. But this music fits this movie so well. And it's just, I don't know what it is. It just, it gets you. I mean, <laughs> I know I sound ridiculous right now, but oh my God, I love this music so much. I'm a music lover, so when the music gets me and makes me feel a certain way it just oh i love it especially in a movie you know it's like what was that sorry if you've ever it's weird like um okay for instance when you watch like behind the scenes um videos and stuff like that and there's no music obviously you know it's just kind of like watching a play it's weird to see certain scenes like without the music it's just it changes the whole 
feel and tone of the movie. Um, so this music just adds to the drama and the emotion in this movie. And there are... <laughs> Give it to her. Help her get it, baby. There are so many... There's probably a lot more examples than I can think of off the top of my head in this movie of how music really transforms the scene. But I think one of the first ones that comes to mind, probably for a lot of people, is the flight scene when he first pushes him. He realizes that he's powerful enough to fly. And definitely one of my favorite scenes in the movie. And um, the music really adds to that. Um, it just completes the scene. It just makes it whole. And um, another scene, I think that the music, my other, my other favorite scene in the movie is um, the world engine scene when he's giving it all he has. He's using full power. He's just, you know, so motivated to stop this thing. And I also, I love the acting in that scene and the music, like I said, it just <clears throat> takes it to another place where it's like, I'm just in awe of that scene. I love that part of the movie. And so yes, the music totally gets me <laughs> in this movie. And I think it also is interesting because it works for different, um, like the same uh, part of the score can work in a different part of the movie. For example, like the softer music, it can be for like um, scenes that are emotional but not necessarily sad. But then it also, like, for instance, in BBS, I know it's not the same movie, but, you know, obviously they use his theme still. When he dies, that soft music, it's sad. You know, it makes you feel, like, made me feel sad when he died, you know. So, just, yeah, totally love the music for this movie. I can't wait to hear his theme again in Justice League when he returns. Okay, so I don't want to go on too much about the music, but you get the point. Um, another thing I love about Man of Steel is that... Um, we get a history of him as Clark on Earth. So, you know, those flashback scenes where we see him as a young child, he's, you know, kind of scared because he's getting all these new abilities and he doesn't understand why or what's happening. And it gives us a sense of what would it be like to grow up like that? You know, you know that you're different from everybody. You don't understand why this is happening. How do you deal with it? You know, you're a young kid. When we see him as a small, small kid, he's probably what, like, six or seven when he goes and <clears throat> hides in the closet at school because he's having x-ray vision and that's scary you know <laughs> so um it's uh it's just really great to see him growing up and um even as a teenager you know he's helping people even though his dad is like you can't be doing this stuff because you're drawing attention to yourself and people are going to start realizing that there's something different about you and you know, I think maybe some people took that as like, oh, his, you know, his dad is being mean because he thinks that, you know, Clark should just keep that part of himself a secret and there's, you know, it's wrong. And, ob you know, obviously his parents would be scared for the world to find out about him, especially as a young kid or a teenager, because they don't want him to end up in a lab somewhere with people, you know, <clears throat> experimenting on him and running all these tests so and obviously they want him to be ready for that when that happens you know so they're just trying to protect him and that's how I took it from the movie when his dad is saying you know you like for instance okay when he saves the kids from the when the bus goes into the river and he is conflicted because he's like why is it wrong that I save them why is it wrong that I help them and then you know, his dad is pretty blunt when he's asking, should I just let them die? And he's like, well, maybe, you know, it's, um, it's a blunt moment in the movie, but it's how they feel because they're afraid that, like I said, he's going to end up in the government's possession or something, you know, and still at this point in the movie, he doesn't even know why he's different. He doesn't even know why he's like this. And then obviously shortly after his dad tells him in the barn, cause he's asking, but, um, it also, um, it also gives us this insight into um, Jonathan and Martha, how it would be to raise, you know, this baby that she found, and 
not knowing what else is going to happen to him. And then he's getting all these abilities and these powers and making sure that he uses them for good and not for bad. And, you know, raising kids is already challenging enough, much less a kid that's getting all these abilities and powers. And what's he going to do with it? You know, how's he going to handle it? And so I like those flashback scenes also. That's, some, that's also something we've never had in a Superman movie. So, um... Yeah, good choice <laughs> for that. Um, <clears throat> and then also, um, this Superman is, <clears throat> I mentioned a little bit in other points, but it kind of overlaps with a lot of the things I'm talking about, is this Superman is so emotional. And um, we see that in a lot of the scenes of Man of Steel. We see it when... Um, <clears throat> when he lets his dad die in the tornado, which I know a lot of people had issues with that also, but the fact is his dad knew he was not ready to reveal himself to the world, and he was right. Um, you know, if you look at how he was talking to his dad in the truck before it happened, he was being immature, he was being disrespectful. So even though he was an adult, technically, his dad knew that he was not ready to take on that huge responsibility. Um, so he trusted him enough to not save him and reveal himself to all the people that were around. So, um, yes, it was sad, but he realized that, you know, the fact that I'm like this is going to have consequences. And once I reveal myself to the world, I can't take it back. Everyone's going to know. And I'm going to have that responsibility now. And so... He just, he trusted his dad. And um, obviously, by the time Lois is trying to tell him, you know, let me tell your story. He's in his 30s by then, and he still hasn't revealed himself to the world. He's just been doing these undercover things by, you know, helping people when he's around and they need help. But then he's using aliases. He's not using his real name. He's, every time he helps someone or reveals that he has these special abilities, he moves away because he doesn't want to stick around long enough for people to realize that he's that different. So he still has not been ready to take that responsi take on that responsibility, you know? Um, so yeah, that's what, I, you know, that just, that goes into the fact that um, this Superman is not perfect. Everyone doesn't just love him. Um, obviously, like I said, he hasn't revealed himself to the world up until you know, the last part of the film. Um, but he's actually still have consequences. And we see all the damage that happens from the battle with Zod. And yes, he ends up killing him, which I didn't have a problem with because I didn't have a problem with him killing Zod because obviously when Zod is saying this is only going to end one way, either you die or I do, we know it's not going to be Superman. So that should have been a foreshadowing to people what was going to happen in one way or another. <clears throat> and, you know, obviously Superman did not want to kill him. He didn't, <clears throat> he didn't take joy or delight in it. He, tr you know, he obviously, we could tell that he did not want to kill him just because it was Zod and he was being, the, you know, a bad guy. I didn't mean he wanted to take his life and it's his own race. <laughs> He's never even been in contact or met anyone from Krypton. Um, yeah, like the consciousness of his dad, you know, but he's never even had family or, you know, Kryptonian people so in his life. So, you know, it's very emotional <laughs> for him that he has to stop, you know, an one of the very last people of his own planet by doing this. And, um, you know, Zod is saying, I'm not going to stop. I'm going to kill millions of people no matter what. And if you want to be on their side, you don't want to help me restore Krypton, then, you know, you're going to have to stop me. And that's what he felt like he had to do. And obviously, <coughs> that's... <laughs> That scream, that yell that he lets out after he kills Zod, a lot of people kind of make fun of it, but it really shows us the emotion and the pain that he felt from having to do that to Zod. And, um, you know, he's still dealing with it afterward that we see in BVS 
um, and dealing with the destruction, he feels responsible. You know, he feels like I brought Zod to Earth. I led him here. It's my fault. These people died. You know, he's dealing with it and we see that. And so I like that it's not just a perfect world, you know, Superman, he just saves a day and everyone's fine and everyone loves him and there's no consequences for his actions. And we see that more in BVS, but we see it a lot also in Man of Steel. And um, it's not that he's struggling with the fact that he should save people. It's just that, you know, he knows that he has this heavy responsibility. And that <laughs> now that he revealed himself to the world, he has to take it on. And so, um, again, going back to the emotions thing, another great show of emotion when he yells, you know, after he's killed Zod. And another part I like when he's showing emotion is when Zod... Um, when he hears from a distance that Zod is threatening his mom and he flies at super, super speed and just plows Zod through the town, basically. And, um, yeah, I really like that emotion that he shows. Um, again, people might think he's dark and whatever, but I just think that, you know, he's still going to have emotion. He's just because he's not human. He has a human side to him. He was raised by humans. He grew up on Earth. Um, he doesn't have <laughs> these robotic feelings and instincts, you know. Um, <laughs> he still has emotion, he still has feelings, and we see that part of him, you know. So, uh, again, so many great things to love about this movie. I don't think he gets the credit that it deserves. Um... <clears throat> But those are just some of the things I love about it. Um, sorry this video's gone a little bit longer than other videos. <laughs> but I just wanted to point out my favorite things about the movie. Um, as always, there's links in the description, guys. And ew. like, comment, subscribe. Thanks, guys, again for watching. And we will see you next time.